it's Mrs. Leffers, and this is Romeo and Juliet, Act 3, Scene 2. This is in Capulet's Orchard. The scene begins with Juliet impatiently waiting for night to come so that Romeo can climb to her bedroom on the rope ladder. Because remember, they're married, and they need to consummate their marriage. I think I talked about this before our break. Suddenly, the nurse enters with the terrible news of Tybalt's death. Remember, Tybalt and Juliet are first cousins. And she also tells her about Romeo's banishment because Romeo is the one who killed Juliet's first cousin, Tybalt. Um, Juliet mourns for the loss of her cousin, which means she's sad. Um, and her husband, and she, it says, Juliet mourns for the loss of her cousin and her husband because Romeo has been banished. He's not supposed to be in that town anymore. Um, and Juliet threatens to kill herself at this point. To calm her, the nurse promises to find Romeo and bring him to Juliet before he has to leave Verona. So, enter Juliet alone. This is just Juliet speaking. Gallop apace, you fiery-footed steeds, toward Phoebus's lodging. Such a wagoner as Phaeton would whip you to the west and bring in cloudy night immediately. Spread thy close curtain, love-performing night, that runaway's eyes may wink and Romeo leap to these arms, untalked of and unseen. Lovers can see to do their amorous rites by their own beauties, or if love be blind, it best agrees with night. Come, civil knight, thou sober-suited matron, all in black, and learn me how to lose a winning match, played for a pair of stainless maidenhoods. Hood my unmanned blood, batting in my cheeks, or baiting in my cheeks with thy black mantle, till strange love grown bold, think true love acted simple modesty. Come, knight, come, Romeo, come, thou day and night, for thou wilt lie upon the wings of night. Whiter than new snow on a raven's back, come, gentle knight, come, loving, black-browed knight, give me my Romeo, and when he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars. And he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. Oh, I have bought the mansion of a love, but not possessed it. And though I am sold, not yet enjoyed. So tedious is this day, as is the night before some festival to an impatient child that hath new robes and may not wear them. Oh, here comes my nurse. Enter the nurse, wringing her hands with the ladder of cords in her lap. Remember, she had to put together this ladder so that Romeo can secretly climb up the window to Juliet's bedroom. Oh, and she brings news, and every tongue that speaks but Romeo's name speaks heavenly eloquence. Now, nurse, what news? What hast thou there? The cords that Romeo did uh, bid thee fetch? Nurse, I... I, the cords. Juliet, I, me. What news? Why dost thou wring thy hands? Nurse, ah, well a day. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. We are undone, lady. We are undone. Alack the day. He's gone. He's killed. He's dead. Juliet, can heaven be so envious? So at this point, remember... Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs nurse is talking about somebody being dead and she's not explaining very well to Juliet who is dead. So immediately Juliet assumes that Romeo is the one who died. A nurse says, Romeo can, though heaven cannot. Oh, Romeo, Romeo. Whoever would have thought it, Romeo. Again, like, hearing that from the nurse would make me think, oh, crap, R Romeo's dead. Juliet, what devil art thou that dost torment me thus? This torture should be roared in dismal hell. Hath Romeo slain himself? Say thou but I, and that bare vowel I shall poison more than the death-darting eye of a cockatrice. I am not I, if there be such an I, or those eyes shut, that make thee answer I. If he be slain, say I, or if not, no. Brief sounds determine my weal or woe. 
Nurse, I saw the wound. I saw it with mine eyes. God save the mark. Here on his manly breast, a piteous corse, a bloody piteous corse, pale, pale as ashes, all bedaubed in blood, all in gore blood. Oh, I swounded at the sight. Juliet, oh, break my heart. Poor Bancro, break at once. To prison eyes, ne'er look on liberty. Vile earth to earth resign, end motion here. And thou and Romeo press one heavy beer. Nurse, oh, Tybalt. Tybalt, the best friend I had. O oh, courteous Tybalt, honest gentleman, that ever I should live to see thee dead. So finally the nurse admits that it is Tybalt who has died. And in this, in her speech, she claims that Tybalt is the best friend that she ever had. Even though up to this point in the play, they have not spoken with each other. So again, it's the nurse being the nurse. Juliet. What storm is this that blows so contrary? Is Romeo slaughtered? And is Tybalt dead? My dear beloved cousin and my dearer lord? Then dreadful trumpets sound the general doom for who is living if those two are gone? So now she thinks both Romeo and Tybalt are dead because the nurse is still being very confusing. Nurse, Tybalt is gone and Romeo is banished. Romeo that killed him, he is banished. So now here is where she admits Romeo killed Tybalt and that's why Romeo is now banished. Finally, the nurse gets to the point. <clears throat> Juliet, oh God, did Romeo's hand shed Tybalt's, Tybalt's blood? Nurse, it did, it did. Alas, the day it did. Juliet, oh serpent heart, hid with a flowering face. Did ever dragon keep so fair a cave? Beautiful tyrant. Fiend angelical, dove feathered raven, wolfish ravening lamb, despised substance of divinest show, just opposite to what thou justly seemest a damned saint, an honorable villain. O oh, nature, what hadst thou to do in hell when thou didst bower the spirit of a fiend in mortal paradise of such sweet flesh? Was ever book containing such vile matter so fairly bound? Oh, that deceit should dwell in such a gorgeous palace. So this is another very famous line from Romeo and Juliet, the thing that Juliet just did. She uses these contradictory phrases where she says something really nice and like kind of puts it together with something really bad. Um, like a beautiful tyrant. A tyrant is a person who takes over everything very violently. Um, fiend, which is the opposite of friend. It's like a, an enemy. So fiend angelical like an enemy who's an angel um dove feathered raven etc because her husband is still her husband but gosh darn it he killed her cousin so now what this puts her in a very weird place the nurse says <clears throat> there's no trust no faith no honesty in men all perjured all forsworn all not all dissemblers ah where's my man give me some aqua vitae these griefs, these woes, these sorrows make me old. Shame come to Romeo. Juliet, blistered be thy tongue for such a wish. He was not born to shame. Upon his brow shame is a shame to sit, for tis a throne where honor may be crowned, sole monarch of the universal earth. Oh, what a beast was I to chide at him. So, Juliet has a moment where she's like, oh, crap, my husband killed my cousin. And then the nurse is like, oh, Romeo should be ashamed of himself. And Juliet is like, he does, he has nothing to be ashamed of. I'm sure that he, I'm sure that there's a reason for this. And he's my husband after all. Nurse, will you speak well of him that killed your cousin? Juliet, shall I speak ill of him that is my husband? Ah, oh, poor my lord. What tongue shall smooth thy name when I, thy three hours wife, have mangled it? But wherefore, villain, didst thou kill my cousin? That villain cousin would have killed my husband. Back, foolish tears, back to your native spring. Your tributary drops belong to woe, which you, mistaking, offer up to joy. 
My husband lives that Tybalt would have slain, and Tybalt's dead that would have slain my husband. All this is comfort, wherefore we by then. Some word there was, worser than Tybalt's death that murdered me. I would forget it fain, but oh, it presses to my memory like damned guilty deeds to sinners' minds. Tybalt is dead, and Romeo banished. That banished, that one word banished, hath slain ten thousand Tybalts. Tybalt's death was woe enough if it had ended there, or if sour woe delights in fellowship and needy will be ranked with other griefs. Why followed not when she said, Tybalt's dead, thy father or thy mother, nay, or both, which modern lamentation might have moved. But with a rear word following Tybalt's death, Romeo is banished. To speak that word is farther, mother, Tybalt, Romeo, Juliet, all slain, all dead. Romeo is banished. There is no end, no limit, measure, bound. In that word's death, no words can that woe sound. Where is my father and my mother, nurse? So she's saying, listen, if Romeo hadn't killed Tybalt, Tybalt probably would have killed Romeo. And I would rather have him be alive and my cousin be dead than the other way around, as horrible as it is. And at the end of what she's talking about, she's like, where are my mom and dad? I need to talk to mom and dad. Nurse, weeping and wailing over Tybalt's course. Will you go to them? I'll bring you thither. Juliet, wash they his wounds with tears? Mine shall be spent when theirs are dry for Romeo's banishment. Take up those cords, poor ropes. You are beguiled, both you and I, for Romeo is exiled. He made you for a highway to my bed, but I, a maid, died maiden, widowed. Come, cords, come, nurse. I'll to my wedding bed, and death, not Romeo, take my maidenhead. Okay, maidenhead and virginity are the same thing. So she's kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm married, and I will be a widowed bride who is a virgin. So she's like, I'll, I'll kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. The nurse, hi to your chamber. I'll find Romeo to comfort you. I want tell where he is. Hark ye, your Romeo will be here at night. I'll to him. He is hid at Lawrence's cell. So the nurse is like, don't do that. I'll get Romeo. He'll be here tonight. He'll consummate the marriage. Don't kill yourself. Juliet. Oh, find him. Give this ring to my true knight and bid him come to take his last farewell. Okay. So Romeo is still scheduled to come visit Juliet that night. Um, and then he's going to have to leave town. So that is the end of Act 3, Scene 2.